What, what's mommy gonna read about today? Mommy is gonna read about the turtle twin and the creature from Jack Cow Island. <gasps> so scary! Castle Cat illustrated by Elsa Sandfield. Alright. Tonight, we're reading book number three of the Tuttle Twin series. Tonight we're going to read about the Tuttle Twins, creature from Jekyll Island. This looks scary. Look, the octopus grabbed the money. <gasps> that is scary. No, I just, I don't want that. Supposed to grab the much. I want the octopus to grab each. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> That's funny. Look, the bees are working so hard <laughs> in making honey. You know, they work so hard in making honey. To making money. And look like in the picture here, look like the octopus is going to grab the money that the the bees. Uh, work so hard for. <gasps> All right. Suit up, kids. It's time to get some liquid gold from our beehives. What's this? Those are the bees working so hard in making. Well, why do they get money? Well, because a lot millions of people loves honey, and they're expensive, you know. So they, People so pay they, a lot of money to get honey. So why does the octopus take the money away from the bees? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe the bees could sting the octopus and the octopus maybe could eat, eat it instead. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> Would you like Ethan to say that um, he wants the octopus he wants the octopus to eat you? That's not nice. No. See? That's not nice. All right, creature from Jekyll Island. Which one is it? Is I want, it which I want one you the like? Octopus to eat you. You want which one you like to be? The bee or the octopus? Uh, no, I don't. I'd like to be the bee. No, I don't wanna be the octopus. I wanna <laughs> be the bee. Okay, you're the bee. I'm the octopus. I'm gonna grab your money. Okay. Creature from Jekyll no, could, Island. Could I be? Could I be the octopus? Yeah, and I'm the bee. All right. So no, up, I kids. wanna be the bee. Next. Okay. So up, kids. It's time to get some liquid gold from our beehives. Mr. Tuttle told Ethan and Emily. One of Mr. Tuttle's favorite hobbies was beekeeping. He and the twins had a deal where he would take care of the bees and the twins would take care of the honey. The best part. Wow, I love honey. They're so sweet and they're good for everything. But you gotta be careful because the bee will sting you. You have to wear the proper costume to harvest the honey from the beehives. All right. It had been a productive summer. Their bees had worked very hard collecting nectar from all of the flowers in vegetable gardens in the neighborhood and turning it all into honey. Mr. Tuttle opened the first hive and blew some smoke inside to make sure the, base, the bees stayed calm. Ethan and Emily helped remove the frames full of honey and carry them to the garage where they used an extractor to spin them for a while until all of the honey had come out and dripped down through the filter and into jars. Emily couldn't resist sticking her finger into the golden waterfall coming out of the extractor. This tastes amazing, Dad, she said as Mr. Tuttle smiled. Even though they were planning to sell a lot of the honey, the Tuttle family made sure to keep several jars for themselves. See that? There's Mr. Tuttle. 
Emily and me then with her proper suit why are you harvesting just, honey why from the are you reading it when it's not even the bee or the octopus well that's how we find out what happened what's the creature well, in the jekyll island all right by the time they had finished grandma and grandpa Tuttle had arrived they had come to town for the annual county fair and farmers market it was everyone's favorite day of the summer emily looked forward to riding the roller coaster Ethan was excited to eat some cotton candy. They were both excited to sell their jars of honey at their farmer's market booth. <gasps> oh, look at them. Uh-oh, it's five they minutes. They look like they're going to watch a movie, it's are they? It's five minutes for what? That's all right. Later that day. It's six minutes. That's okay. Come on. Let me read the book. Stop picking your nose. <laughs> that's, hey, that's not funny. That's gross. You don't want anyone to see you pick your nose. That's very gross. Please. <laughs> Later that day, Grandma and Grandpa Tattle surprised the twins with a trip to the movies. Ethan had been begging to see the latest superhero movie at the new theater. They showed movies in 3D and had seats that vibrated to make the movie feel more real. At the movie theater, Grandpa Tuttle was amazed at the price of the tickets. I paid 50 cents for a movie ticket when I was your age, and now it cost over 20 times that much, he said. Can we get some popcorn? asked Ethan. And something to drink? asked Emily. You bet, Grandma Tuttle replied. Stop this gross, please. Stop picking your nose. I have a nap. Sure. We Can we get some here. popcorn? Asked Ethan. <laughs> and something to drink? Asked Emily. You bet, Grandma Tuttle replied. The cash register rang up at $10. My heavens! <laughs> Why does everything cost so much these days? She asked Grandpa Tuttle. This night out cost a little more than we had planned, Grandma whispered to Grandpa. As they settled, they all settled in their seats. Into their seats. Stop for all dropping for popcorn. That's because of that rich creature from Jekyll Island. That's why. Richie creature from Jekyll Island. That's why. Grandpa complained a little too loudly. The twins overheard Grandpa. Emily was about to ask what he meant when Ethan suddenly let out a loud shout. His popcorn lunch into the air, spilling onto Emily's lap. Uh oh, I see disaster. I was angry, spilled that and eating it. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> oh my goodness. As Emily looked up to see what had startled Ethan, her seat vibrated and she let out a scream of her own. <gasps> Oh, they're watching a giant octopus in the show. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that not, looks scary. that's not the giant octopus. That's the octopus coming out the TV. Actually. Oh my goodness. No, it looks real because it's a 3D. As Emily looked No, at it's real because the octopus coming out the TV when they were watching a TV show. And now it's about well, to eat everyone. When you wear the 3D glasses, the oh, show what? on the TV oh, looks real. I know what it is. That, she's attacking them. Oh, no. All right. As Emily looked up to see what had startled Ethan, her seat vibrated and she let out a scream of her own. A really mean-looking octopus had suddenly filled the movie screen, and its 3D tentacles seemed to reach out towards the twins. It was only a preview for another movie, and soon their own movie began. But Ethan and Emily couldn't forget how startled they were. <gasps> that is scary. But that's just in a movie, and they're wearing 3D sunglasses, so it looks very real that it's about to get them. All right. 
Mom, the movie was awesome, Ethan told her as she tucked him into bed that night. She kissed Ethan goodnight, then left to tuck Emily in. But Ethan couldn't sleep. He was restless, still seeing the scary octopus from the movie theater in his mind. He could hear his dad and Grandpa Tuttle talking downstairs in the dining room. Ethan could tell that his grandpa was upset about something. He crept down the stairs to better hear what they were saying. I don't know how I'm expected to make this work, said Grandpa. My income isn't going up, but the cost of everything is definitely going up. I've worked hard all my life, and now my savings is being stolen. Ethan saw his dad shake his head slowly. The creature from Jekyll Island strikes again. Life would be better if it didn't exist, Mr. Tuttle said. There he was again. That was the second time Ethan had heard about this creature in just one day. But what was that? Why was a creature taking Grandpa's money? That's not nice. What kind of creature take other people's money? Wake up, Emily, whispered Ethan into his sister's ear as he shook her. Well, what, what is it? Emily stuttered as she came out of a deep sleep. What's wrong? Remember how Grandpa complained about the creature from Jekyll Island when we were at the movies? Ethan said. Emily nodded. Well, Dad knows about it too. He just talked about it downstairs. What do you think it is? Well, what have they said about it? Asked Emily after a big yawn. Grandpa said that the creature is the reason why things cost more than they used to. And just now, he was talking about his savings being stolen. And Dad blamed it on the creature, Ethan added. What kind of creature needs money? <laughs> I wonder what kind of creatures why need money. Why did he steal from money? I don't know. Let's worry about it in the morning, replied Emily. I need to sleep, so I have lots of energy for the roller coaster ride. Poor Emily. Ethan woke her up from her sleep. Yeah, poor Emily. Oh no, looks like either Ethan or Emily is dreaming about the, the octopus. I hope the giant e octopus. I hope Ethan is dreaming about it. <laughs> Not Emily. The turtle twins both dreamed of the scary octopus that night. Oh, they both <laughs> They both dream about it. <laughs> Ethan imagined it stealing people's purses and piggy banks. <laughs> Emil dreamed of a haunted dungeon on Jekyll Island where a crazy scientist created a monster they grow by eating people's money. Oh, no. Mom, please move. The sun was beaming brightly on the fairgrounds the next morning as the turtle family set up their booth and displayed their jars of honey for people to buy. The fair was packed with people. It reminded Emily of the thousands of bees moving around in their hives busy at work hey neighbors bet, said fred they better uh, i think i thought they can go to the carnival because the grandpa and grandma have no money that's why they're selling honeys to make money hey neighbors said fred who was pushing a well barrel of tomato crates to his booth fred was the twins favorite neighbor and a good friend it's a great day to be in business, isn't it? All of those tomatoes came from your garden? Ethan asked Fred. Yep, this and several boxes of other vegetables, Fred replied. I owe a lot to your bees. They, they have been doing a great job pollinating my garden. 
they got honey. But since we're making money, you know what? It'll just be terrible, but you know what? The octopus will The creature? Steal. Yeah. <laughs> so steal the money. Why don't they just steal something? No. Well, they need to they need to be wise. They need to watch the creature that steals money. They need to protect their mo own money. All right. Grandpa and Grandma Tuttle sit up their chairs in the shade, and settled in to watch Ethan and Emily make some sense. I know why, but they're I, going to the market. Uh, whatever the tanker girl hit, he steals your money. But he, the tentacle hit Grandma and and Ethan, so that means they lost. All right, come on. All right, come on. Grandpa and Grandma Tuttle sit up their chairs in the shade and settled in to watch Ethan and Emily make some sales. Grandpa began reading the newspaper but was quickly interrupted by Emily. Why is a creature taking your money, Grandpa? She asked curiously. Come again, Grandpa replied. Yesterday, you were talking about a creature from an island that makes things cost more. Emily explained, and last night, Ethan heard Dad talk about the creature when you said that your savings was being stolen. Here we go, said Grandma quietly, chuckling to herself. You two better sit down for this, she said to the twins while winking at Grandpa Tuttle. Where to begin, said Grandpa, rubbing his hands together slowly. Here's a question. Why are you selling honey today? <laughs> now Grandpa needs to explain about the creature that stole his savings. To Emily and Ethan. Ethan pulled a handful of money from a box and held it up to Grandpa. Because we want more of this, he said excitedly. I Steal Emily with money. Um, we should steal Ethan. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> why, don't, why are you picking Ethan so much? Don't, don't pick Ethan so much. Come on, let's continue reading what happened. <laughs> and why I do like, you want money? Because I like him being pissed. All right, don't be a bully, okay? Come on. And why do you want money? He asked, looking at Emily. You can't eat it or play with it. So I can ride the roller coaster, she replied, pointing to the sky high ride across the field. And get some cotton candy, Ethan added. That money you have is called a medium of exchange. It's something that we can use to trade with somebody for things we want. And they can use it to get the things they want, Grandpa explained. But do you need to use money? He asked. How else would we buy things? Ethan replied. Why don't you try to trade some honey for roller coaster tickets? Mrs. Tuttle suggested, offering to watch the booth for them. Great idea, said Grandpa. That's what we call bartering. Come on, let's go ask. You think, you think the lady is going to give Ethan a ticket with a jar of honey? I think so. We do bartering in Philippines too. It's like trading one thing to another. Uh, Instead of using money, you can also trade things yeah. that they, they like instead of money. Oh. That works too. Hi there, Grandpa said to the woman at the ticket counter. We're wondering if we can barter our honey for a few roller coaster tickets. <laughs> oh, I love honey, the woman said. But I'm sorry, we can't accept it as payment. Oh, why didn't that work? Ethan asked as they walked back to the booth. She even said that she loved honey. Why wouldn't she trade with us? Well, imagine if everyone tried to barter for tickets, replied Grandpa. How would a, bar how would a barber take his family on a ride if the roller coaster worker happened to be bald? <laughs> Or what if a car salesman tried to trade a car for tickets? That would be thousands of tickets. Yeah. Wow, a car is probably worth thousands of tickets. 
There's no way he could use that many. These guys were fun. Emily said. Well, who is saying all of that? Um, I think it said Emily said. And even if some of the roller coaster workers... Funny, yeah. I know. And even if some of the roller coaster workers wanted a new car, <laughs> how would they divide it up between themselves? <laughs> Grandpa added. But when we use money... Oh, what here's the octopus again over oh, there. I know. That's the creature in Jekyll Island that takes money. Steal money from people. Savings. Well, where is he going? I don't know. Come on, He's let's... going to the ice cream shop, the carnival shop, the table All shop. All right, let's read what happened. Why the... the... Fuel let's shop, find out what the, uh, what the, the creature the does. The stand shop. The carnival shop. All right. But when we use money, Grandpa continued, Gosh. we don't have to worry about finding somebody else who wants to barter with us. It makes trading a whole lot easier for everyone. Okay, I understand that, Emily said. But what about the creature? Why is the guy using crayons in his hand? I don't know. Let's find out. But what about the creature? What does it have to do with all of that? One of the sneaky things the creature does is make prices go up. Grandpa explained. Like your grandma said yesterday, things cost much more today than when we were your age. And it's the creature's fault. Imagine if the creature could sneak into the fairgrounds and the, change the cost the of the ticket. Why is the octopus stealing money and he's putting everything higher? Alright, just listen to the story so you understand, okay? Imagine if the creature could sneak into the fairgrounds and change the cost of a ticket, he added. Right now, it's one dollar for a ticket. But what if the creature made its ticket cost two dollars? Ethan imagined the scary octopus slithering through the fairgrounds late at night, holding markers in its tentacles and writing new prices on everything. So this octopus changing all the prices, making it double. Instead of one dollars, the octopus made it two dollars. So he makes money, some money for himself. Yeah, and I'll be able to buy okay. everything. The creature is is uh, putting an uh, a dollar more on every every prices, making it more expensive, so he he can keep more of the money for himself. That would be awful, Ethan said. We'd have to sell way more honey to earn more money. But I don't get it. How can a creature raise prices or steal your money? Grandpa waited to answer while the twins sold the jar of honey to a customer of $3. The creature isn't an actual creature. Grandpa explained. I just call it that because it kind of acts like one. It does bad things and it usually works in secret so nobody knows what is happening. The creature is really a group of powerful people, some from the government who control the laws, and others who are bankers who control money. Who's giving them a couple money? They're selling their honey. Well, how much money will they get? I don't know. Two thousand? I don't know. A long time ago, after people realized that bartering wasn't working too well, they started to use different things as their money. Grandpa explained. Really interesting stuff, interjected Grandma Tuttle. Like seashells, barley, or rice. Imagine having to carry a packet full of rice to pay for things at the store. That would be ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. After that, people used gold and silver, right? Asked Emily. Dad has lots of gold and silver coins, he says. Yes, those metals were used as money because they aren't easy to find in the earth. They are very rare. 
They can also be melted and made into small coins if you need it. To spend a smaller amount, Grandpa replied. That's why almost everyone accepted gold and silver for thousands of years, he said. Those coins are a great medium of exchange. But over time, bad people began acting like a sneaky creature stealing some of the metal. Yep. Those are greedy people. They want everything for themselves. Now the people are being greedy. No, some people that are being greedy. There were kings who would secretly shave off the edges of coins to make new ones. Grandpa Tuttle explained and Why turned around. Why are they saying that? Some people are greedy. Because they want more and more. Yeah, these guys are greedy. I just want to establish it's no more money. Oh, yeah. There were kings who would but secretly... But if the guy is trying to throw from away from more pockets. Mm hmm see that? Okay. There were kings who would secretly shave off the edges of coins to make new ones. Grandpa Tuttle explained and turned around and buy food and nice things with the stolen money. The people wondered why they kept having less and the kings and the king's friend kept getting more. That's because they were cheating by making new money. Grandma Tuttle found a quarter and showed it to the twins. Eventually, people noticed when the coins started to shrink. So they invented new ways to stop those in power from cheating. See these ridges? she asked. If metal was shaved off why, the coin, why were they cheap? Because they want everything. Uh, they want to be rich easily by not working so hard, just taking, you know, by cheating. See these ridges? She asked. If metal was shaved off the coin, the ridges wouldn't be Look there. Look at the coin. Will go boom, boom. Uh -huh. we'll go so people would know if some of the metal had been taken. Oh, he already got two coins and this guy got none. Ethan had always seen the little bumps on the edges of coins, but now he realized what they were for. To tell if the coin had been shaved or not. Smart idea, he thought. I, I, I agree. But it didn't stop there, Grandpa said. No powerful people continued to find sneakier ways to make new money. Well, why, and still why, from her, yes. Why are they being like, I point the arms in the air and smiling? Because they're happy that they're having more and more money from other people. What? Well, oh, I know. Those people are stealing money from the bank. Not from the bank, from other people. That's whatever. That's the bank. Yeah, those that. are the maybe. I don't know. Let's yeah, that's, find a, out. that's the bank with, with all the money. That's how we feel. Let's keep reading. But why do we have, like, we're about to beat someone up with a smile? Because that's their devilish smile. Their laugh. They're, they're happy. They have, they're, ge they're, they're getting more money. Right, let well, me continue the reading smile, so we know. The smile seems it's about them about to punch us in the face. No. It, their smile is about um, like a feeling of success that they're getting more money. But it didn't stop there. Grandpa said no powerful people continued to find sneakier ways to make new money and steal from hardworking people until finally they hatched the trickiest scheme of all time. The story was getting exciting. The twins moved closer to Grandpa Tuttle. The year was 1910. A small group of the wealthiest and most powerful bankers in the world, along with a couple of people in the government, held a secret meeting on Jekyll Island in Georgia to plan the ultimate bank called the Federal Reserve. This bank, this creature, has one main power and a very sinister one, the power to actually make unlimited amounts of new money. 
That would be awesome, shouted Ethan. What's Whopper is the same? I don't know. If I could make all the money I wanted, I'd be the richest person in the world. But which Whopper is different? This one. But this one don't have a hat, you silly. All right. That might be good for you, replied Mrs. Tuttle. But let me teach you why it's a bad thing for everyone else. Let's use that cotton candy you want as an example, she said to Ethan. Imagine there is only one left for sale. I can pay one dollar for it, but you created lots of new money so you can pay five dollars. Which one of us do you think the vendor will sell that cotton candy to? He'll definitely want the five dollars from me, Ethan replied. That's right. And when this happens again and again, at all the places your new money is spent, prices start to go up everywhere. The people that get your new money first can buy things before the prices go up. But the people who don't get the new money can't buy as much anymore. Eventually, everybody's money is worth less. Mrs. Tuttle added, This is called inflation. Well, then I'd have to make even more new money. Ethan said jokingly. You're a sneaky one, aren't you? Grandma Tuttle said playfully. That's why I mentioned the creature last night when Grandpa said his savings was being stolen. Mr. Tuttle said, Grandpa is retired and he's not earning new money. So the money he had saved up is becoming worth less every time the Federal Reserve makes new money. Oh, what? Talking the octopus. Oh no, one of his wages tied, but everything else he had. And yeah, it's gotten by the octopus, by the creature. No, it's not. Everything else is not tied from you. But you know what? This his one, piggy bank. This one's about to get here, and that's about the to get The octopus got here. his wallet, the yeah. piggy bank. It got him by his foot, by his leg. So he's now upside down. Yeah. Emily imagined the creature grabbing poor grandpa and turning and that's, him. That's that damn and oh, grandpa. That's grandpa. Emily imagined the creature grabbing poor grandpa well, and well, turning him is, upside down. Well, shaking grand, out his pockets. Is grandpa there here or dad? That's dad and that's grandpa. Well, where is grandpa and the other picture? Oh, is this grandpa? Yes. Oh, oh the See? one with the orange. Grand the the creature in Jiggle Islands gra uh, got grandpa's wallet, piggy bank. He got yeah. him by his foot and he's yeah. upside down. And he's upside, upside down. down and that's funny. Cause he's upside down and tied into a rope. Mm -hmm. I've seen a video about something like this. Ethan said it happened in Germany, right? Oh yes, by the op. Grandpa replied. After World War One, people yeah. would have to bring a wheelbarrow full of money just to pay for a single meal. <gasps> the creature in that country had created so much new money that it became worth little more than the paper it was printed on. Check this out, Mr. Taro said, pulling a piece of paper from his wallet and handing it to the twins. This was printed in the country of Zimbabwe. Please. The money said one hundred trillion dollars. The twins jaws dropped and their eyes bulged. Dad, you're rich, Emily said. <laughs> Mr. Tuttle laughed. Not really. The creature in Zimbabwe printed so much money that it became worthless and people stopped using it. This sounds like it's a lot of money, but that's the point. There was so much money being made that it couldn't actually buy very many things. Ethan thought it might be funny to change the booth sign to read Honey, $500 trillion Zimbabwe dollars. He giggled to himself, but decided that most people wouldn't get the joke. 
Thankfully, tickets for the roller coaster were still only one dollar, and Mrs. Tuttle and Grandma offered to watch the booth while everyone went oh, this, for a ride. Well, where's Grandma? This is Grandpa, uh, and this is Dad eating the nambi. But where's Grandma? Grandma is watching their honey uh, stand while they go for a ride. Rather than trying to barter with honey or pay with Zimbabwe dollars, this time Grandpa paid with a five dollar bill and Why purchased a few tickets. Be this tall. He's not that tall enough. He's on the way up the hill. Right. Making new money isn't the worst part, Mr. Tuttle stated as they got in line. The bankers who met at Jekyll Island had friends in the government who helped pass laws the first everyone to use the new money from the Federal Reserve. Oh when my god, we're trying to reach for money at least this, this and that. Yeah. This and this got for money, but the other two are trying to reach for money slow. <laughs> when government makes everyone use a certain kind of money for trade, it's called fiat currency because everyone needs a medium of exchange to buy things. Having to use the creature's fiat currency gives the creature control over people and can even trick people into buying things they normally wouldn't buy, Mr. Tuttle added. Emily was doubtful. How can you trick people into buying something, she asked. The Federal Reserve can make the prices go up and down by adding or taking away how much money there is. Grandpa explained, Today you're selling your honey for $3 a jar, he added. If the creature said it would make the price go down to 50 cents tomorrow, would people buy your honey today or wait? They would definitely wait to get a better deal tomorrow, Emily answered. Ethan's eyes lit up as he and his family buckled themselves into the roller coaster. Or what if the creature was going to make our honey cost $10 tomorrow? Everyone would be rushing to buy it for $3 today before the price went up. Exactly right, shouted Grandpa as they were flung into the air. That sounds like what happened to our neighbors, said Mr. Tuttle at the end of the ride. A few years ago, the Federal Reserve made the price of homes go down, so they bought several more to rent to others. Then it made prices go up, so people who needed to sell their homes couldn't find any buyers. They ended up why? losing all the homes they had bought, including their own. Well, why is she crying and all the homes are, are not to be anyone could go in that house. because they couldn't afford to to pay for their the the homes that they bought when they were cheaper so they lost the the extra homes for rent and their own house because they can't find a, a buyer to buy it so that's why they're trying to do yeah now they're sad now you see why the creature is so dangerous, added Grandpa Tuttle. A lot of people have suffered around the world because it controls fiat currency and causes inflation. After they returned to the family's booth, Ethan began doodling on some paper and began drawing a rich man wearing an octopus costume. Suddenly, the creature didn't seem so scary anymore. He was just another person, or really a group of people trying to control everybody and take their wealth by inflating the money. Emily grabbed the paper, crumpled it up, and threw it in a trash can. There, I got rid of the creature. If only it were that easy, chuckled the dad. Unfortunately, there's not much any one person can do about it. I try what this is for mom and dad and Emily and eat it. Where was grandma and grandpa? Somewhere else. The only way to beat the creature is to teach more people about it and get the government to change the laws to require us to use the creature's fiat currency. 
If people could choose what money to use, the creature would lose a lot of its power, concluded Grandpa Tuttle. And just like some smart people figure out how to put ridges on coins, added the dad, smart people today are figuring out how to trade without the creature being able to control them. Using things like gold and silver products, garden co-ops, online bartering, and digital currencies such as Bitcoin. In a way, the creature acts like you do with the bees, Mrs. Tuttle told the twins. Powerful people controlling hard workers and taking away their savings. Sound familiar? She asked with a smile. Speaking of honey, it looks like we just sold the last of it, Mr. Tuttle said. He paid Ethan and Emily their portion of the money their family earned that day. Ethan quickly bought some cotton candy from a vendor wandering by their booth. Come on, Emily, he beckoned. Let's go spend our money before the creature makes everything cost more. Grandpa Tuttle couldn't stop laughing at Ethan's joke. Mr. Tuttle smiled as his mother put her arm around him. Those are some very smart kids, son. <gasps> Emily, Dad, Emily, and Ethan. Well, All right, what well, is... What happened? Did I say...